Hey, welcome back to Build with Bricks Maven Part 4. In the previous episode, I think I probably tried to do too many things and it went a little long, so I'm going to try and keep these a little shorter, get right to the point, uh, and do some actionable things. So we are recreating this design in Figma. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you might want to check those out. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we're basically taking this design in, in Figma file and putting it into our Brick site. So in the last video, one of the things I did was set up core framework. Um, I'd like to go back in there. And the only thing I really did was set up my colors. Um, yeah, so I got my primary and secondary. In fact, I can delete my tertiary here. I don't really need that for here. And I'm going to go to the components. And one of the things, if I go to the front end, and I'll go ahead and edit, you can probably see already with this green primary color I have and that white color, uh, one of the things I can do with um, uh, advanced themer here is the contrast checker. And that will alert me of any ADA accessibility issues. You can see here, it's not liking that green text and that white background. And same with the button with the reverse. So we have some issues that we need to address. And again, this is not like a full accessibility audit or anything like that. We're just going to Come in here and make some tweaks and uh you know if it was a real client site we'd be making more um effort to make sure that's all taken care of um all right so i'm going to get rid of this tertiary i don't need that style so we have our buttons here and we need to make some changes so if i come back to my figma file we see we've got dark text round corners and let's start with that so color let's do dark and our border radius, let's do radius full. All right, and maybe a little more padding on the sides, like M, L. And I might tweak this a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, there are these small and large modifiers as well, which you can override. Uh, in any case, what else do we need to do? Um, Let's change the background on hover. So instead of our primary, let's do our secondary. And we're also, it looks like gonna need to change the color here to a light on hover. Yep, and if we go back here, we'll see there's a border that's carrying over to the hover style that has the primary dark one. I'm gonna come here and do border copy that and then just uh, grab that secondary, put that as the color of the border. Perfect. All right, so what else? Uh, before I close that, actually, we've got a couple variations. We've got the slight, and the way to add these is you add the button class and then you add a second class. Uh, so if you're coming over from automatic CSS uh, or you, you, know, you use both the tools, you usually have a button dash dash primary dash dash action, et cetera. Uh, this is a little different, so just keep that in mind. So, so we have a white button. That's nice. On hover, I'm going to make that reverse, I think, to, well, let's just do background of primary, and, the, and I think that's it, actually. Yeah, let's go with that. And I'm going to also make a dark color. I'm going to add a modifier to dark. And... That is our default button. So now we need to make some changes. So background of dark and color of white or light. And let's grab that border again and make the uh, border dark. Okay, that's probably fine. So now we have a dark variant if we need to use it. Um, perfect. Let's save that. And let's get let's do the header and footer. We might need to come back in here and tweak like some of the link that might that does not look accessible actually. Let's just get that uh, to be darker for now, and we'll probably come back in and tweak that. Let me do primary. Um, I don't know. Let's just go with a dark darker green. Okay, so yeah, we definitely have some more accessibility issues here. Anyway, moving on, I'm gonna 
crank the typography up a little bit. Oops. Typography is a little small, I feel like, for this. So I'm going to come in here. And what do I want to do? I want to. I don't know, we could change the max scale from minor third to major third. That'll give us more uh, variation, more sort of scaling up on the larger side of things. So if we go here, let's refresh that cache. And that's a little bit bigger. Yep. And our body text is still the same. So let's stick with that for now. And what else? What else? Let's go to the, let's do the header and footer. Uh, if I can get to the right place here, templates and header. All right. So we have got a dark header. We, I don't know. It looks like maybe I, I did a transparent header there. So we'll maybe do that. I don't know. Uh, we've got a button, green link for the menu text. Okay. So here's our header. We don't have any. Uh, styling except the layout stuff from Bricks Maven. So let's come into, let's get this to a dark background. Oh, my right click isn't working. It's okay. Let's go with the not quite fully dark. Let's open the container. Um, I know that the button needed to be uh, not just button, but we need to add another modifier or secondary. And that'll give us the purple button. And yep, okay. And what else? We've got our brand in here. We've got our heading. Let's make sure we can see this. Oh, that's background. All right, and our nav. Let's open that up and go to our nav. Make sure we can see our typography. That's the primary color. And what else do we have? What else we can we can add a toggle from core framework, and just so we can see it. Let's just get a little transparency on there, a little less maybe. Okay, and what else? We, it looks like our you can see here this is using grid. You can tell that. And so if I look at the stuff inside of it, uh, this is not spanning. So if I do like span two. Yep, that'll look a little better. Span more of the columns. And I think that's it for now. Right? That should be all we need to do. We're keeping it simple. And perfect. So let's just go back to our templates. And we've got our dark header. Okay, so let's move on to the footer. Let's open up our Figma file again. Go down to the bottom. And let's see, we've got... Again, that dark background, we've got these pseudo accent blurs, white text, light text, and a gradient border. All right, let's get it done. So we've got our top part of the sort of call to action area. Let's get the background dark, uh, dark, dark, dark L1. And let's make sure that typography is light. Come to the header, do the same. Okay, um, let's hide these images. We don't need those for now. Um, all right, and let's go to the bottom, get the background changed. And again, same with typography, get that light. Okay, we're looking good so far. Um, what else do we need to do? We need to change this gradient border. Uh, so what? What can I do? I can obviously write the CSS for that. What have we got in here? Anything? Nope. Uh, I seem to be having issues with my CSS. Just any moving on. So this border, I'm going to right click it, manage the component. We're going to go to the container where that border was, and let's cheat and write some CSS like. Uh what do we want? Um, let's do like a two pixel border with gradient color of primary and secondary. Copy that, I guess. Let's see if that works. Hit enter. And image border, border image slide. Okay, let's see what that looks like. 
and look at that look at that you know you have to write the css i don't know if that was actually quicker but <laughs> it's cool all right what else do we need um come back to the figma file we've got some accent blurs so let me okay let's do some css i guess for that let's open let's create a new class called let's just call it blur uh actually let's call it primary blur because we'll probably do one for the secondary color i'm not sure um all right so css so we need to do an a, a pseudo pseudo element so um what do we need to do we need to do root and we need to open it up and for the container for, for whatever it's attached to so this class we can attach it to the section or container we need to make that uh, position relative so that it can attach to it. Position relative and isolation isolate. And then we'll come down to the before. We'll create the bef uh, before element. I can do RB tab from advanced steamer. Nice little shortcut. And let's, we always need our content. Um, oh content and we need to do like create a dimension so let's do like width of 50 rem i guess i don't know and let's just do the same for the height uh oh i forgot a colon here excuse me 50 rem and um what else do we need to do we need to do we need to give it some kind of color background color of uh, can I type here primary? Look at that. Hey, look, there it is. So there's our 50 by 50 square pseudo element. Uh, what else do we need to do? Um, we need to position it uh, absolute. Absolute ab. So, oh my gosh, absolute. Okay, so now it's absolutely positioned there. What else do we need to do? We need to define where it is. So we need to like do top zero, um, left zero, I guess. That'll put it in that corner. Uh, make sure that our Z index is not um, messing with the stuff in front of it. Okay. Uh, what else do we want to do? We want to like transform and we want to rotate it like to the left, negative 10 degrees, maybe. And uh, filter blur, let's blur it a bunch, like, I don't know, 100 pixels, 120 pixels. Okay, so it's starting to take some shape or lack thereof, and then let's just make it less opaque, like point four. Okay, um, that works. So I'm gonna do the same. Let me duplicate, let's clone the class. Let's call this uh, secondary blur. I guess we could probably do these on the same class, but we might want to reuse them. So secondary blur, instead of the primary, let's do secondary. Okay, perfect. Is that only changing it there? Yeah, okay. And instead of top, let's do bottom. Well, actually, we can we can keep it. We'll just we'll leave it like this for now. That's fine. Uh, well, I don't know. We might we might come and change these. I don't know. I'm gonna do like bottom and uh, right zero. Did that is that not working? Bottom right. Yeah. Oh oh, I know what the problem is. This needs to be after. Okay. All right. So there we've got our two accent blurs. Uh, you know, not too far off from the Figma file. We need to, I don't know, replicate it and change the positioning. So we'll tackle that in another video. But um, anyway, there's our header footer. 
Um, we've got sort of a dark header. Got our little toggle there. Uh, and our footer, assemblers, gradient border. All right, let's call it there for today. All right, thanks for watching. Tune in for part five coming up.